grapes that we get, we, we pick them by hand. And it's a beautiful thing if, when you do that because the crew, when they're dealing with the bunches, if there's any rot or dried grapes, they can throw them out. That's super key. When, when you're dealing with rotten grapes, you already have a fermentation happening. There could be the beginning of the vinegar. We call it volatile acids. If you get that in the tank, it's hard to get rid of. Clean grapes in, and then once they're in, you got to keep them clean. Once we have figured that out, um, your wine becomes much more palatable. My name is John Nail. Uh, the name of the winery is Givali. It's a Croatian word. It means cheers. We have uh, on my mom's side of the family comes from Croatia. We still have a lot of family back there. It plays a role. It plays a role in what this winery is. Back in 2006, my parents, we were celebrating their uh, 50th wedding anniversary, and they took the whole family back there. And while we were back there, um, they would show up at our little hotel room every morning about seven or eight in the morning, and they'd pick us up and they would, and they'd want us to come and drink the wine that you know Uncle Joey made or Uncle Jimmy or Uncle, you know all that whole crew or Ante or Yvonne, you know. That, that every family had a little vineyard, and every family would make their own wine. And then the uh, the wives they had little stills, and they would distill the wine, and and they turn into brandy. And to the brandy they would put. I mean, we're talking rose petals, or all the herbs, you know, the cherries, the peaches. They had this wonderful, wonderful brandy. It's just amazing what they could do back there. Croatia is a great place. It's a fun place. My children, when they came home, they were like, Dad, we have to start doing this. And so we had a lot of grapes at the time, but we made raisins. Occasionally, we'd sell to wineries. We planted a row of uh, varietals of wine grapes, 11 different varieties, and uh, we started there. When we planted the vines, um, we, were, uh, we were given a grape called Alicante Boucher. And Alicante Boucher was most planted uh, uh, wine grape pre-prohibition. And we don't even hear about it anymore. It's a wonderful grape. It's got it's, it's red juice, red flesh, red, and red meat. And so when you, when you pop that grape, it's like blood. It's, and uh, it's a great, it's a wonderful wine. We did some Alicante Boucher and, uh, early on, and it, is a, uh, it was a big hit. Another thing that influenced me in this is obviously Napa Valley, their cabs, their big cabs, their Merlots. You know, we think about the Paso and the Jammy Zins, and those are some, some, th some of the things we try to, you know, attain. Uh, the whites. I was probably most impressed, there are some great whites in California. We were in France and I was really impressed with uh, their white wines. And uh, so that's why we have a Viognier, a Roussan. We're attempting to get the, you know, that, type of, uh, we're, that type of flavor. Sweet wines are super popular right now, especially with the young wine drinkers. We do a sangria that is like 8.5%, uh, uh, which is very fruity and eight and a half percent alcohol. We have a orange muscat, we have a, a, we have a white, it's kind of a white port, we call it Iva, it's excellent. It uses some muscat and it uses Thompson seedless and then we, add, we fortify it with brandy and that brandy has a little vanilla taste to it and oh my God, it's wonderful. The beautiful thing about Fresno is, is that Fresno can grow pretty much anything. We don't want to pick it as a raisin. You know, you don't want to let it, you don't want that grape to raisin. You got to pick it when it's time to be picked, and when you do that, if you have a decent winemaker, you can make a beautiful wine out of Fresno, absolutely beautiful. So there's no reason that you have to run to Napa or Paso, or there will be numerous wines. I hope there'll be numerous wines you like, but there's no doubt in my mind that you'll find something you like at all the wineries. When I started drinking wine, I was part of that big group of people that. When they would do taste tests, I fit right into the I fit right into what they were finding out. The Americans, they love oak. They love oak in their wine because it imparts a little vanilla taste. But when you do a blind tasting, a true blind tasting, I love I love the oak. And then my wife, she's a partner in this, and she likes oak more than I like oak. And so what we would do, we'd get, the two of us would get together and we, we would taste our wines because I wasn't even really the, 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 the jammy, the fruity guy. I, I mean, I do enjoy that a lot. When I taste other wines, it's, that's not what, I, what I'm drawn to. 
And so, so we taste that together. We kind of split the difference. I like it right now. She's like, no, I need more oak. And it's worked out well. Right now, we have a, a 23 Gewürztraminer. It's mild. It's very mild. So we, I would start them off with that. We have a nice Chardonnay. We have a nice a Roussan Viognier blend. Our rosé is very uh, Provence, you know, Provence. It's a Provence style. It's acidic. It's bright. Uh, we have a great, big, overwhelming cab in 2017. We still have some of that available. It's so big. It, I, 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 I would just open that bottle and eat it with cheese and crackers because it'll overwhelm a meal. And our 23s that will be bottled in the next few months, we probably won't release them. We'll let them sit in a bottle unless I get real excited. I want to start with the cab. Our Zin, this is a batch of Zin, and I think we're going we're gonna to make this Zin a, uh, we're going to add a little bit of sugar to this. I have a cab, and I have, I have a cab, and I have a Merlot. That's plenty. It's been in neutral oak, and then when it got hot in May, we put it in the tank and kind of brought it in here to keep it cool, and that's it. And, that's, and this is where we're at. And I've done nothing with it. It needs a couple filtrations, and it'll be ready to go. And we'll probably put it in a bottle this summer, in the next month or two, and we'll keep it in a bottle for a year before we release it. But this is a super clean, super easy, wonderful drinking cap. It's a fantastic Fresno cap. A couple years ago, one of our friends came by and brought us some uh, dehydrated Syrah grapes. And out of this, we decided we we're going to try to make a port. So this is about two years old. And then, of course, we added some high proof and some brandy. And that's really good. I don't know if this is good of our, our neighbors who's, who's world renowned, but it's good. So this Pinot Gris is, uh, is uh, it's, it's a lot bigger than what you go buy from a grocery store. There's, this, this is a nice wine. Okay. I know there's a little Merlot in there, but I think you'll get the idea. Okay. This will be the first wine that we open today. Uh, it's called the River Trio. This is a blend of uh, okay. Roussan, Viognier, and a little bit of orange muscat. I don't think it's over acidic, and uh, I think it's really, I think it, it, it's pouring really well. It's really clear. We, uh, we, we cold stabilize this. It's a uh, Roussan, a uh, Viognier, and, or and a little, just a splash of orange muscat, because we wanted to have three grapes in it. And it's wonderful right now when it's 100 degrees in Fresno outside plus. It's wonderful coming out of a, a refrigerator at 34 degrees. So it's, it's great. So this is our rosé. The rosé is made from, it's a blend of Grenache and Mulvedra grapes. So we crushed them together and then we, we took them out of the bin and we pressed them immediately so they were touching the skins for an hour to two tops. And this is the color you get. We have this beautiful label. It's just perfect on this clear box, you know, and it's beautiful. This is a Provence style rosé and which means it's acidic. There's no sugar in it. We get these big burly guys in here and they're like, hey, I just drink reds, or we get the gals, I just drink reds. Well, this will, this will stand up to their, to their taste buds. So it's very nice. Unfortunately, what it doesn't stand up to is when the gal comes in and she's like, hey, I want a, you know, I want a soft, sweet rosé. I'm like, well, no, that's not, but this is a very, very nice rosé. Oh, this is our Tempranillo. So this Tempranillo uh, is grown in Kerman. It's kind of a maple flavor. Other people taste different things, but this is a great Tempranillo. People love it right now. So our Tempranillo, so what do we decide that we would eat with this? One of our members and friends, we were talking about this yesterday and they decided that they wanted barbecue. They wanted to do a barbecue. They wanted barbecue ribs with this. So I thought, yeah, I think that would work. You know, it's really because, you know, you think of, you know, if you're doing some brown sugar or maple syrup and you do that, this would work right into it. It would pair really well. This 21 cab is not this great big overwhelming, you know, cab. One of the things that we do at this winery, we have three or four local artists and we put their pictures on our wine bottle. Ann Whitehurst is the artist, and she uh, painted. She
she, she did eight paintings, and this is one of her eight, and they're all around the room. And it's her, she called it the Veritas Project. And she, she writes backwards, you know, in reverse. And you put a mirror up to it, and you can read it. She does a great job for us. This nose draws you in. It woos you in like a like a, a true lover, right? So it's nice. It's really, yeah. This is a wonderful cab. We have a large variety of wines, so I, I, I'm I don't feel uncomfortable saying, you know, come out here, you'll enjoy yourself, you'll find a wine, we'll find you a wine that you enjoy. 